Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, we will be seeing how to use AI in Photoshop and transform this background to something like this. And here the important and the different thing will be that this will be a background that we actually deliberately want. That's why we have a separate image for it. Otherwise, you can just use a prompt which says golden textured background. And then there's nothing too great about that when it comes to using generative fill. So I've given you both these images, you'll be able to find the link to download them in the description. And as always to use AI, you will need the real Photoshop. In fact, we are actually not inside Photoshop, we're inside Photoshop beta. So using the link in the description, you'll be able to get a free trial to the photography plan, which includes Photoshop Lightroom, and also you'll be able to download Photoshop Beta, because this feature that I'm gonna be showing you, which allows us to use generative fill along with the reference image, is right now only available in the Beta app, not in the main Photoshop. In fact, it's quite surprising that it's been quite some time since this hasn't been passed on to the main Photoshop. But right now, let's see how to do this. So first of all, we will need to select the background, and for that, usually it's a good idea to select the subject first and just invert the selection. So we can take the object selection tool, make sure this is on the lasso mode, which allows us to just draw a free hand selection around the subject. And the object selection tool, as I've mentioned in a couple of my videos before, is much better than using the select subject that comes in the menu from the select menu. You see the subject option that also works in the same way, but you can see the video which is hovering on top. I've done a test for these two and the object selection tool just gives much more precise selections. So definitely use this when it's a choice between the two. Now, if I just zoom in, you might have some issues like it might have missed some areas like this, which are very easy to add because we can even take uh, the normal lasso tool, just hold down shift to add and just make sure that we get all these. So yeah, sometimes it can miss out certain things, especially you can see this is a slightly challenging selection around this area, but you can see nothing that we can't really correct uh, quickly. And some areas here, probably this one, if you're being too perfect, and let's just see, I think this is a part of the dress, but you can see it. there was a gap here and it even selected that. So it's pretty accurate that way. So pretty much a one click process, but now we need to select the background. But before we invert the selection, one very important thing that you need to do right now is, by the way, I just noticed this part also. So let's just add this. So before you invert the selection, just copy this subject or this selection onto a separate layer because that is gonna be important later on because once we do use generative fill, you must have seen this often that wherever the edges are, they get distorted. So we need to have that perfect subject on a separate layer because a lot of times when you enable at the enable this layer at the end with the perfect subject, it just hides the distortions. So it's a very easy way to just fix that problem. So what we can do is just hold down Control Command C and Control Command V so this comes on a separate layer. Right now we don't need it, okay? Let's just call it original subject, though that's not necessary. But right now, let's just hide this. But what we can do is we need to get our selection back. Make sure you're, uh, you have selected the base layer. Then just hold down Control Command and just click on this layer. Okay, so we get our selection back. We don't have to do everything again. Now we can inverse the selection. And now we're re ready to use generative fill. So let's hit generative fill. And you can see here, next to the prompt option, we have this reference image option, which is not available in the main Photoshop yet. Okay, hopefully this should come there soon also. And the best part about this is that if we give the reference image, we actually don't even have to write the prompt. The generative fill AI feature is intelligent enough to understand that yes, you wanna generate something close to that. So this is where I've given you this image. So you're basically gonna hit this icon, click on choose image and wherever they, this is there on your computer, just select that and it's gonna come here. So let's do that. All right, so you can see the reference image is here. We don't really need to do anything else. We're gonna hit generate and let's wait for the results here. All right, so let's wait for this and you can see. So in the normal Photoshop, you would have had to type something like golden texture background, but then that wouldn't have generated something like this. So this reference image option really allows you to get the output exactly as you want. Now, it may not be 100% close to this. Yeah, the texture is a bit different, but at least it's close to that. And we get three variations. So let's see the second one. I think this also looks good. Let's see the third one. 
I think this is a bit off. I think the first result was the best one. And anytime you find a result which is as close to something that you wanted, then you can just hit these three dots, for example, on the first result here and hit generate similar and just hope that maybe it understands that, yes, we probably want a better version of this. Otherwise, you can also create multiple generations and I do this up to three or four times. And then once I have around 12 results, I'll take a call and see which one is the best. But just let's just wait for this. So you can see sometimes right now, uh, this doesn't work that well, the generate similar feature. Okay, but you can just hit, you know, just do the same thing again, create some more uh, variations. But I think for this tutorial, we'll probably stick to the first result here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we have some issues here when we enable our original subject layer so this was what i was telling you that around the edges it distorts the subject so you can see if i compare this with the original some of the hair have gone this has extended but at least those areas which are within the boundary of the original subject are going to get hidden the moment we enable this layer so can you see it saves you a lot of work around those areas it's just that the areas on the ai layer which exceeded the subject those still have to be corrected but then that is not uh, too tough as you're going to see. So what we can do here is right now, let's just hide this original subject layer. I was just uh, showing you how it's done. But right now at this point, what I like to do is just stamp everything onto a new layer under the original subject. So till now, whatever we have done with the AI stuff. So we're going to uh, create a new layer, hit the shortcut, control, command, alt, option, shift, E. And then only these two layers are relevant. Let's just call this AI layer. And this is our original subject. Okay. So you can see. We just basically need to correct these areas which have come out. So what we're going to do is with this AI layer, one of the options that we have is we can just basically kind of get rid of this, okay? Make this blend into the background, then this won't protrude outwards. So what we can do for this is we can use like the content aware fill tool. So just select this bad part and just right click, go to content aware fill which is also, by the way, AI based. And what we can do here is we can just select the auto function here. So it's going to take the sampling data from everywhere. And we just need to make sure of one thing, which is that once we do get um, this overlay, which is de uh, denoting the sampling data that Photoshop is using to fill up this area, we just need to remove her from that. So we're telling Photoshop, no, don't fill this area with the subject. So sometimes it's you just have to do this manually and you're gonna see that this is gonna improve. So you can see here. And it doesn't have to be perfect because most of this area, if you think of it, is gonna be covered later on by the original subject layer, right? But still, I try to get it as perfect as possible. Just remove anything that you see on the overlay which is coming on the subject, that's all. And you can see that this is gonna look much better. Like you can see here. And now we're all set so we can hit okay. And now, for some reason, I'm not able to remove this time to update announcement, uh, not updated Photoshop beta, because I don't use it that much unless until I'm using the reference image feature. And now, if we enable the original subject layer back, you can see that that problem is gone. However, we still have one issue, which is that if you think from a photography point of view, if we had such an imposing background, like a gold background behind, this would definitely cast some light onto the subject, whereas obviously this subject has been clicked on some other kind of a background. So we are not seeing that color cast come on her skin. Now there's a very easy uh, fix to this. What is this layer that you're seeing where we want those colors, those gold colors to infuse in? This is original subject layer. So what we can do is with this layer selected, we can use a very underrated function in Photoshop, which is great for compositing like this, which is if you go to image, you go to adjustments, go to the match color function. Hey, you don't have to do anything manually. So once this dialog box opens up, we just have to tell Photoshop what is the original image from which we want the colors to be infused onto the subject. And what is that original image? This 11.jpg image that is opened up on a separate tab, the gold image, with just the gold, nothing else, right? So that is gonna reflect in the source dropdown menu now. So that's why you need to have that opened up in a separate tab. That's why I actually opened this up. And now we'll be able to select it here under source. And the moment I do that, you can see that it infuses the colors of that onto the subject. So this is the target layer and the source layer we're getting the colors from. But this can be too strong. So what I like to do is there's just one slider which is very important, which is fade. I can fade this effect fully. So when I'm on 100 fade, it means that I'm basically not seeing the 
uh, infusion happening. But now what I can do is just increase it slightly till the time I start to see that color come here. So because you don't want too much, but something like this, right? So if I hit OK now, if I show you the, if I undo this, you'll be able to see the difference is huge. So just see, you can see, this was just not looking real according to the new background. But if we see the match color by redoing it, you can see that just makes it look much more real. So this is how you go from this to this. So I hope that this tutorial helped you out. You can see that it's not just, Photoshop is not just about using AI. You need to know some of the basics of layers, layer masking and all these things very well. So I've got a completely free Photoshop course, which has 20 videos. The link will be given in the description. And also when it comes to talking about the backdrops and backgrounds, I'm just about to, in, a, in probably the next week, I'm just about to release a course which deals only on uh, with this subject. That means how to mainly correct uh, studio backdrops using AI. So if you have wrinkles, if you, have, uh, if you need to extend the backdrop, if you need to replace backdrops or backgrounds like this, it only deals with this very niche topic. So once that course is released, you will be actually able to find the link to that in the description of this video. Also, it will be available via Udemy. I'm someone who's doing a lot of experiments with the different AI tools inside Photoshop and outside. Tools that can really help us photographers do our job very, very quickly. So if you want to follow these experiments, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and I will see you next time.